Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer joins me to unpack Anglo's fertilizer interests, South Africa's green fields potential, and Jupiter Mines' cheapy expansion. Welcome, Martin. Hi, oh, Sashni. Now, can you unpack Anglo-Americans' interest in the fertilizer space and a possible acquisition in the UK? Yes, uh, you know, there are a lot of headlines around Anglo's first sort of announcement of the year mm -hmm. where we see that they are looking at possibly entering the fertilizer space by acquiring the shares of a company listed in London called Sirius. The asset of this company is also in the UK. So it could be a situation where uh, Anglo-American begin a project that is already fairly advanced mm. uh, in the UK and, and t take it to positive account producing polyhalite. Uh, polyhalite is um, associated with the fertilizer industry. We haven't heard much about it. It was a sort of a forgotten type of mineral, but suddenly it's come back into the headlines with the activities of Sirius. It's almost seen as uh, something that could disrupt the fertilizer mm. industry. At the moment, fertilizer prices are really not that good. So, you know, you can see Anglo coming in at the bottom of the market, but also potentially getting a bargain mm. because something like a billion dollars has already been spent by Sirius on this project that they will advance. So if they acquire the shares of Sirius, they probably do that at potentially half that value. So they've already got the value mm. doubled before they start. So. It'll be interesting to see whether this deal goes through. I think February the 5th, they must firm up the offer. But there have been discussions. They've confirmed the discussions. They've had media conferences. They've had a lot of questions put to them. It seems like this will not interfere with their dividend policy. It will not interfere with the investment that they have said they would made in South Africa, like five billion to six billion mm -hmm. investment. So it's not going to interfere with Anglo in any way that would disturb a lot of policies. They have got uh, a big project in Peru that they're also pursuing. So some were questioning on, you know, can you do these two projects? Uh, they seem to think that they could take both uh, and, and not interfere with the company in any meaningful way mm -hmm. and make sure that shareholders benefit. And two professors uh, are arguing for South Africa to spend more money on research and development into the production of green hydrogen. Yes, you know, I mean, hydrogen is really, it's popping up everywhere I look now. You know, some of the rock stars like U2, when they performed, they <coughs> performed on mm. hydrogen energy from a fuel cell, m just making a statement, you know, saying, let's do things in a way that protect Mother Earth. And now we see even the flame, when it is lit in Japan mm. for the 2020 Olympics, that energy will be hydrogen energy. Again, a statement from the world that we need to build a better world and you can do it through hydrogen. Locally, the penny has doesn't seem to have dropped to the extent that it has elsewhere in the world. But we see that these two people uh, are speaking out now, the, the one from Pretoria University, the other from Wits University, saying there is major potential that we've got you know, in South Africa to do something better in energy. We know that energy is a long-term business. We know that mining is a long-term business. Well, it has been in the past. I can remember, you know, Madupi and Kusili being discussed mm. at, at Eskim, and it hasn't even come through yet, you know. You, you, you also look at the situation where we're doing very well with coal exports, but what happens in a world that, that's disrupting this, that doesn't want fossil fuels anymore? You've got to look to what you're going to replace it with. And people are saying, look, here's your opportunity. You can really enter the space, the solar space, the wind space, because you've got the superior mm. conditions here. You can produce the hydrogen. You've then got that fuel cell technology. You can turn that into electricity. We know that the air industry at the moment is under pressure. The the uh, travel industry is seen when it uses aircraft to be contributing very negatively to uh, you know th uh, the pollution situation in mm. South Africa, hitting uh, climate change, not mitigating climate change, but actually aggravating climate change. We can see that the aerospace industry wants to change. They want a new fuel. We're saying we can do it here because we've had most experience 
the, uh, in the world on fisher traps. We've been using coal, we're burning coal, we can do it differently. We can create a, a fuel, an aircraft fuel, that'll be seen as clean and green. And that is just one of the opportunities that pop up. You know, there's so many others. Uh, we've got this Northern Cape with a lot of power. We see that it's not really being used mm. to great effect at the moment. We've got all sorts of uh, studies by the CSR which show that we could produce hydrogen economically, we could export it, we could use it ourselves. We could be pulling up at the pumps where there's a threat to our platinum because we see that the internal combustion engine now is absorbing platinum group metals in the biggest fashion. But there's a disruption to the internal combustion engine that uses petrol and diesel. That disruption is called electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles. They coming in. If they do coming in, come in meaningfully, you know, even palladium, which seems unstoppable, the price, will be hit very, very severely. So you can say, well, diesel has negatively impacted platinum. Rhodium and palladium, palladium, which is record level, mm. that could also be knocked back. So as a country, how do you replace you know, those um, disruptions to <coughs> your industry? Well, we've got the answers here that can be done. We don't see much response from government at the moment. And that could be to our detriment as a country, because when you see the fires of Australia, when you see the fires in California, when you see the fires of the Amazon, you say, brother, it's not going to be long before lawsuits mm. <laughs> start coming through. If you continue to pollute and, and to put carbon to the air the way we are, some somebody's going to say, OK, we're not going to take the exports or otherwise if you do import from them, we're going to sue mm. you. There are going to be all sorts of things happening, I think. So. The, we've got the opportunity, we've got the means of moving out of this uh, particular fossil fuel type of uh, gridlock uh, and we need government to, to respond positively. <coughs> and lastly, Jupiter Mines uh, will soon undertake a feasibility study on the expansion of its cheapy mine. Yes, so Jupiter Mines, it's listed in Australia and uh, they mine in the Northern Cape. They've done particularly well. They're now looking at uh, exporting w a lot more, but the study will take place over three years, whether they should expand and how they should expand. When you look at that operation, it's been very successful. It's, it's probably the biggest um, export of manganese from South Africa at the moment. So uh, they've done a major contribution to the economy, and we should be grateful for that. But what I did question them on, I said, look, you know, you have been using diesel generator sets. I know you want to move to... Um, using uh, the Eskim mm. power, but you know, what about doing something that's correct? You've got the Northern Cape sun there. You know, why don't you generate um, energy from the sun and the wind that you've got there? Well, I, I didn't even get a courtesy of a reply, which I thought was not good from an Australian company, you know, mining here, mm. particularly with these Australian fires now going on. I mean, uh, this was done before that, but it seemed to be treated with disdain. disdain. So I appealed to Caesar, I appealed to a higher level, and eventually I got some very, in, well, they weren't comprehensive replies. They didn't seem interested in, in, in the topic, which I think people mining in the Northern Cape now must get interested. If they want to mine in the Northern Cape, they must do it correctly. Mm -hmm. There is the sun there, there is the wind. Use it for your electricity. Don't, definitely, don't burn diesel with generator sets and, you know, look away from Eskom if you can, mm. particularly since this is doing well and wants to expand. Of course, it's doing so now when the manganese price is not good, so which is always a good time to look at expansion because it's a cyclical business and decisions will only be taken, obviously, mm. if, you know, the, the market uh, improves. But at the same time, I think that they should be uh, holistic in dealing in South Africa and make sure that at least they show some sort of responsiveness to a publication asking them questions and that the publication doesn't have to go to a high level before they come back with not comprehensive mm -hmm. uh, replies. So I hope that Jupiter do what is good for South Africa, particularly uh, on the energy front, but they have done a good job on the actual mining front. Thanks for speaking with us. It's Martin. a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. 
And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.